welcome. I'm so excited to be kicking off Bloomingdale's very first beauty breakdown. If you don't know me, my name is Tenny. I've been doing YouTube and Instagram makeup tutorials and reviews for years. Hey, John, <laughs> I see some of your comments at the bottom. So I'm so excited to do this. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating one of my favorite looks, especially since we're going into the springtime. It's a little bit of like a rose gold, rosy makeup look. Um, since we're going into the springtime, it's the season. And feel free to adjust and um, maybe, you know, use a little less or a little more depending on your complexion or your preference. So I think that's it. Um, also, if you have any questions, um, the Bloomingdale's team will be answering on the back end. And the products I'm about to use today are available at the Bloomingdale's nearest you or bloomingdales.com. So we're all also going to be bringing two to three people on at the end once I'm done with the look live with me on camera um, to answer any questions you have about beauty or the look that I just created. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is just pin this hair back so it's not annoying and in the way. <laughs> this is basically like my makeup tutorials that I shoot in my studio, except we're live. <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is prep my skin. Um, skin prep is super important when it comes to any makeup look, whether it's a lighter look or um, more intense and more glam. You just want your skin to be well hydrated, well moisturized and ready to receive that makeup on top of it. So first product I'm going to start with is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. This moisturizer and I go way back. It is a really solid moisturizer that I like to use both in my skincare routine and as makeup prep. Um, that's why I like when it's like a multitasking product, that's a good product to me. So I'm gonna start out with this and kind of put on a generous helping, make sure my skin is nice and moisturized especially because I am using a fuller coverage foundation. And the foundation that I'm using, I'm gonna show you in a second, is the Airbrush Flawless Foundation by Charlotte Tilbury. Beautiful foundation, especially if I'm going out or if you are into more full coverage foundations. If you like a little less coverage, something a little lighter, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush, sorry, Hollywood Flawless Filter is a really, really nice one. It has just like this light to medium coverage, but it just has like a nice glow, very dewy finish. So the one I'm using today is this one right here, the Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I'm using the color 7N, so it's seven neutral. Moisturizer away. And what I typically like to do is just take the pump, put a little bit on the back of my hand, and then going in with my brush, I'm using a dual fiber brush. I'm just gonna grab some of that and first kind of distribute a little bit across my face, just rough distribution. And then once it's on there, I'm gonna start buffing this into my skin. So the buffing motion is gonna give you just a really, as it says, airbrush finish. Um, the more you buff like this, the more it's gonna look nice and perfected, very smooth. And you can also, Kind of take this down into your neck to really blend it out. I'm just really hoping I don't get one of those scam likely calls during this live. <laughs> that would be criminal to <laughs> interrupt this look with a scam likely call. So again, just going to continue to blend and really go into my brow bone as well to make it all blended. And for foundation, I like to just kind of keep it easy and not use too much. If you like to go super full glam, you can definitely add more. I'm just gonna stop right here because this is just enough coverage for me. Okay, so moving on to my concealer. You're gonna see a lot of Charlotte Tilbury products in this look because I'm just such a fan. And these products, like I said, are available at Bloomingdale's and Bloomingdale's.com. This is a great concealer. This is a Charlotte Tilbury um, Magic Away Concealer. I'm using the color number six. Um, this is perfect for highlighting under my eyes, really concealing anything. So I'm just gonna bring some of that product up. 
And this has like a sponge tip too, so it's easy to apply. So with this, I'm just gonna, it is a fuller coverage um, concealer, so I'm not gonna go crazy with it. Just enough to really brighten the center of my face. I'm gonna go down my nose a little bit into the center of my forehead. And I get some darkness in here too. Right there. So not too, too much, but enough to really make an impact. And then I like to use just a flat concealer brush. This one's by Tom Ford. Um, and then this really gives me enough precision to really only highlight and conceal the areas that I want to always go in there to really give the eye that lifted illusion. And then of course, all the way into the inner part, the inner corner of your eye and just really blend that out. And especially when it comes to the, the right under your lash line, feel free to take your finger and kind of blend out because that skin to skin contact, that warmth is gonna give you a nice natural blend. And like I said, oh, wait, this is like my favorite makeup hack is to put concealer right at this outer corner of your eye. And it really just creates the illusion that your uh, the outer corner is nice and lifted. So again, just blending, blending. And I'm gonna show you one more thing at, at the very end. Tenny, we, we, while you're working, we just have a question from you. It's Allie sure. from Bloomingdale's. Yeah. When you do foundation and concealer, Brittany is asking, do you like a duo fiber brush and do you ever use your hands? For foundation and concealer, yes. So if I'm going for a more natural look, absolutely, like a tinted moisturizer or something like that, definitely I'll go in with my hands, kind of pat in, even like a, a potted concealer. I'll just kind of go in with my ring finger and dab it across the under eye area. So definitely because this is more, I want to give you guys like full glam today. Um, but because this is, like I said, a fuller coverage look, I'm going with the brushes. But anything that's a little less, intense more every day for sure I'll use my hands so just blend 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 and then one thing I like to do once my concealer is blended out is I'm just going to go back to that dual fiber brush and just go to the edges of the concealer just to make sure everything's nice and blended nothing there's no stark contrast between your concealer and your um foundation. It's just like extra assurance that everything is nice and blended. So that looks good to me. Next, we're going to set. So I have a love-hate relationship with setting powders. <laughs> I've never loved them because I just don't like a heavier look, but they are necessary if you want to set like, you know, make sure your, your makeup doesn't get greasy or crease under your eyes. So this one is one of my all-time favorites. It is the Airbrush Flawless Filter um, Perfecting powder and the color that I'm using is a medium, excuse me, airbrush flawless finish, skin perfecting micro powder. And with this guys, I'm just gonna go super light. I'm gonna take some of that just in the areas that I feel I need it, which is just under the eyes, the outer corner, and just kind of flicking out into my smile lines. That's really it. I don't powder my whole face because I like it to stay nice and dewy, even if it is a fuller coverage look. Otherwise, if you're powdering everything down, it gets very two dimensional, the look. You wanna have life and movement and dimension to the face. So I personally don't like to flatten out everything with a powder. So that's about all I'm gonna do. Now for more dimension, <laughs> we definitely wanna contour. Um, and for contour, I'm gonna use this giant, amazing bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. This is their airbrush bronzer. Have a look at that, nice and big. Um, this will go a long way. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a kind of a, it's not a dense brush. Don't ever bronze or contour with a dense brush. You wanna make sure you're not getting any streaky lines. Um, anything more dense is gonna give you lines. Um, you want to use something that's a little more fluffy, that's going to give you nice blended edges. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. So I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to start and you can see I'm using a really light hand. I'm hardly like, I'm not gripping the brush. 
I'm just kind of like, like light wrist. <laughs> I'm gonna use that to start contouring into my hollows of my cheeks. And like I said, just really lightly using the very tip of the brush. Do you see that ends up nice and blended? It's not like a stark line. And you can kind of blend it into the cheek area too. And going into a little bit of my forehead. I don't contour my forehead too much, just a little bit on the sides. A little bit right here on the jawline, because you know that that lockdown weight was a little intense. So gotta contour the jowls a little bit. <laughs> Again, the other side. This is my, yeah, this is my jam for a contour. It's always just use a fluffy brush because that's always gonna give you the most natural blended look. And you can always build, that's the thing with makeup. I would rather go light to begin with and build as I go, as opposed to putting on too much. And then how do you really take that off? So there we go, we're nice and contoured now. Moving on to a little blush. So this is a product that I just discovered thanks to Bloomingdale's. <laughs> I would have never been able to try this if it weren't for them. Um, this is by Trish McAvoy. It's their liquid face color in the shade one. I, if I have a chance to, I will always choose a liquid or cream blush over powder, even for a more, you know, done up look. So this, I'm just gonna twist up, get some color out of there. With this, I'm just going to dab a little bit on my cheeks. And then, again, another dual, dual fiber brush. I'm just gonna blend that out. And this is a nice sheer color. So if you were doing a very minimal everyday look, this would also be really suitable for that. But it's just such a beautiful, especially for springtime, such a beautiful glowing warm pink. And again, if you're not happy with the edges of your makeup, like I feel like a little bit too much ended up on this side, I could always go back to my concealer brush and kind of correct that, erase that. And that's it. That's, that's how we correct mistakes around here. <laughs> there we go. Nice little pop of pink on the cheeks. So I think we're actually done with the face. Um, we are going to move on to the eyes. So for the eyes, I'm going back to Charlotte Tilbury. And again, you can find this palette at Bloomingdale's or Bloomingdale's.com. This is a stunning palette. This is the Pillow Top palette. Um, it's got a nice variety of colors, a nice range for more daytime, more subtle to disco basically. So let's start with a blending brush. So I'm gonna start with this color right here under the desk trio. And this is gonna be the color that I just work into my crease right here. It is a light color and this is the color that we're going to be blending over with deeper and more shimmery shades. Just a really easy crease color. And again, same thing with this, don't grip your brush super tightly. You wanna kind of <laughs> my YouTube videos, everyone always points out the pinky. It goes rogue every single time. <laughs> it's just a thing I do. I do it with my paintbrushes, just the same. It's so funny. So we're going inner corner to outer corner and kind of just like whisking it out to create almost like a semi wing shape. But again, the purpose of a color like that is to be able to blend other shades over it. So now I'm actually going to go into the next color right here, this sort of matte salmon shade and just work it a little bit closer into the lid, but still kind of increase territory. You see how that's really just bringing a little more rosiness to the look, but I'm not really adding anything to the actual lid yet. I'm kind of still working on creating a little bit of dimension, bringing a little color to the look. So I'm starting at this outer corner and kind of nudging it in toward the center part of my crease. 
this is like your blueprint for any look, whether it's more subtle or more of a smoky look. So now I'm actually going to take my finger for this. Your fingers are your best friend when it comes to shimmery eyeshadows. So we're gonna go into the day trio right here and we're gonna take this middle shade. It's just like, it's kind of like a, like a rosé kind of shade. And this I'm gonna pop right into the center. And the reason why fingers work so well for um, shimmer shades, and I'm gonna blend it by the way with the rest of the colors I've already put on, is look at how much dimension and how much pop that gives my eye. If I did this with a brush, which I absolutely could, it's just gonna end up a lot more subtle. Um, as opposed to, you know, sometimes people spray their brush with a setting spray or something to make it pop even more and look super metallic. I don't want it to pop that much, but this is just enough using my finger. So again, pop it into the center first, and then from there blend up and to the left and the right. I'm shifting from like looking in the mirror and <laughs> looking in the camera. So again, all the way in the inner corner and just blend out. And don't be afraid to drag this a little bit into the crease as well. Okay. That looks good. Um, another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my little pinky and I'm gonna go into this color right here. This, the furthest to the left. And I'm gonna pop that right in the inner corner I know a lot of people love an inner corner highlight. It's classic in makeup and it always looks nice. And I'm just gonna blend that with the rest of that shimmer. Great, so now what I'm gonna do is add a little more dimension to the outer part of my uh, lash line or my lid. So I'm gonna go into this on the date trio. It's just a matte brown. And with this, I'm just gonna focus this right here on the outer corner. So you see how that's just deepening just the outer part, creating the illusion of a more lifted look. And again, of course, always blend, blend, blend. And you wanna create somewhat of a winged shape out here which you can always blend out with your finger. I am pretty happy with that. And again, on the other side, starting right here at the outer corner, deposit that color first, and then start to, like I said, nudge toward the center. And blend. Blending is usually most successful in small circular motions. And again, creating that little shape. Just add a touch more here. The hardest part is balancing both eyes. <laughs> Make sure that they look even. Okay. I do wanna add just a little bit more of that shimmer right here. The center of your eye is the highest point of your eye. That's where it's gonna catch the light. So if you're gonna go crazy with shimmer, do it right there in the center. And then I'm gonna take a little smudge brush, a little pointed smudge brush, and I'm gonna go into, let's actually go into this first color that I used in my crease and run that along my lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go in again into the shimmer shade right here and pop that right under my lash line as well. I tend to concentrate most, if I'm gonna put any color on my lower lash line, I concentrate most of it right here as opposed to out here because the more color you put out here, it's gonna drag the eye down. That's the reason we put darker shades up here so that it makes the eye look lifted it's an illusion. So if you're putting a little color here and a little color here, 
it creates that kind of like semi cat eye without going nuts <laughs> and going too far with it. Great. All right, so now let's move into a little bit of liner to give this a little more drama. Um, I'm going to use the Trish McAvoy Intense Gel Eyeliner. And this is the color Deep Aubergine. This has a smudge brush on the other end, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a very messy line. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna smudge it out. So just lay the line down and then taking the smudge brush, we're just gonna smudge that out so it becomes a smoky line as opposed to a really defined line that you have to make perfect. <laughs> Something like this, you don't have to make perfect because you're smudging it out. So it's a little bit of a, a little cheat, a little hack. The more smudged it is, the less perfect it has to be. I know a lot of us don't have a super steady hand with eyeliner. And I just created like a little flick at the end, nothing too intense. Same thing on the other side. Just lay the line down a little more. And then using the smudge side, just gonna blend that out and create a little flick at the end. And I often just use my finger to correct anything with liner if it doesn't look quite right. So yeah, that's it. Just like a super soft smudged outline. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a little trick with, um, again, illusions. Um, I'm taking this Trish McAvoy eye brightener in shell. This is something that, you know, in the past has always been used for defining like eyebrows. Like this is what you could do. You could create a line here and then just kind of blend that out to create like a highlight. Do you see how it kind of defined the eyebrow area? So I just kind of do a line there and then blend it out. Similarly, you can do this at the outer corners of your eyes as well. And this is just gonna really amp up that definition and making it look like the outer corners are nice and lifted, so. Just a little, little hack I like to use. Now, moving on to mascara. I'm gonna use the YSL Volume Effect Faux Seal Mascara. This is one of my all time favorites. And here's a hack for um, foundation, I mean, sorry, mascara too. Hold the wand at the base of your lashes, roll the wand up and close your eye against the wand. Look at that. Look at how insanely like voluminized and tall it made my lashes look. So roll it upward and close your eye against the wand because that, that way you're really creating friction and allowing that wand and the formula to go through all of your lashes. And that's it. I like to concentrate most of the mascara on the outer corners because again, that creates a lifting illusion. Again, rolling and closing, creating that friction. Just a little bit in here, not too much. And I'm personally not a fan, especially when I'm doing kind of a, a more like, you know, not like a smoky look. I won't put um, mascara on my bottom lash line. It's just a thing for me. You can if you want to, I just prefer not to, so. Moving on to our last two steps. Um, I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Lip Cheat. Her lip liners are called the Lip Cheat in Pillow Top. So with this, I'm gonna do a very light overline on my uh, lips. When you're overlining, don't go way outside. Do you see you, my lip line is right here? I'm kind of going just outside of it to create a contour. If you go too far outside of your lip line, it starts to look a little artificial. And 
same for the bottom. I like to use lip liner as more of a contouring tool. Whoops, got that on my chin. Um, instead of like lining my lips. So I'll put a little bit of, I'll fill a little bit on the outer edges because the more lightness you have in the center, the more they look plump. Okay. Do we have a question? <laughs> Annie, someone is asking when you, put on under eye concealer, it tends to cake under their eyes and crease. So how do you prevent that? So um, it, it could be a couple of things. It could be the concealer you're using may not be suitable for you. Sometimes concealers tend to be either too heavy, too greasy. Um, I always opt for ones that do the job and cover well, but have a nice natural light finish. Um, you could always try um, just what I did in the beginning, very lightly setting it with a good quality um, under eye setting powder. Um, you just don't want to overdo it. The, you always have to think the more you put on, the more you're going to see, you know, the more opportunity there is for it to cake up. So try building very lightly. Um, and I'm always recommending really good concealers. The Magic Way is one of them. Um, that's, I think, and also make sure that your under eye area is well hydrated before you put it on. Don't just go on and put it on without anything under it. You wanna make sure you have a moisturizer or a hydrating primer. Anything that preps your skin to be hydrated and moisturized is gonna give you a better chance at fighting off creasing and caking. So now we're gonna go in with the final step, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Lip Bath in Pillow Talk as well. But basically everything we use today is from the pillow top line. Um, this is like a, there's no like tingling or anything, but it really does kind of plump up your lips. Makes them look nice and pretty. And with this brush, I actually like to go into the liner and kind of blend it in. So you don't actually see the liner. It just looks like one blended look. And I believe that concludes the look. Just like I said, a really spring appropriate look, but a little bit more intense, if you will. Um, you could definitely wear this on date night. Um, you could wear it to, you know, if you had an, an interview on Zoom or something, um, it's still very subtle and soft, um, but it is something you could amp, amp up if you wanted to, or kind of tone down. This palette, like I said, is very um, versatile. So you can do so many different looks with it. If you don't wanna add the eyeliner, you can absolutely do that. If you wanna stop at step one after just kind of, you know, uh, contouring your, your brow bone, you can absolutely do that too if you don't like shimmer. So I hope you guys like this look. I'm a big fan. This is one of my favorites. Um, so now we actually are gonna bring a couple of people on screen to ask questions. So. Bloomingdale's team, I will leave it to you. Yes, we have a couple of on-screen questions for you. And first, we're going to bring up John. Yay! <laughs> Hi. Hi, Cindy. Hey, how are you, John? Good. How are you? I'm good. It's so nice to talk to you. <laughs> I know. I haven't seen you in years. Um, I know. My question <laughs> is... <laughs> Um, my question is, I noticed you said you never or hardly ever um, set your face. So how do you prevent transfer like onto your clothes or like when you hug someone else, which is a weird concept nowadays, but how do you prevent I, that? <laughs> um, I just basically stay away from it. I always have. <laughs> um, you know, with, with um, makeup, I'm always just less is more. I only apply what I think is like especially when I get to the lower part of my face, you know, if you're hugging someone that's really like the part that kind of makes contact with them, I kind of just blend away. So there's not much even happening here. Um, but you know, even, even when you set some transfer is going to happen. Um, but I just, am really strategic about it. Like if I'm going to set more parts of my face, it'll be <clears throat> under here, obviously here where it gets a little bit, if you get a little like sweaty, <laughs> it might get a little shiny there. 
maybe right here, if anything. Um, but I've just, I've never really given that much thought as opposed, like, you know, as, in, as, it, as it pertains to transfer. Um, I think just because I use the minimal amount of product, I've, I've had very few problems with transfer. So maybe like try that, like very little product. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. It was nice to see you. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Thanks, John. And Thank you. now we have Amber up. Hi, Amber. You're on with us. Hi. Hey. Hi. So I have a question. So sure. I've been following you since like 2013. Okay. Um, but what is your favorite eye look for hooded eyes? Ooh, for hooded eyes. Actually, for, for hooded eyes, this is kind of like the blueprint. What I did today, no matter what colors you're using, this is kind of what I like to do where I concentrate a little darkness out here because again, that's gonna give you a lifted look, but I, I leave all of this more or less on the lighter side. You know, there are so many looks where, I'm gonna grab a brush here and point it out. There are so many looks where, you know, people bring a lot of darkness down into here that doesn't necessarily work for headed eyes. So if you keep this area nice and bright and just kind of focus the darkness out here, that's always gonna be flattering on hooded eyes. Again, no matter what color palette you use, me, I'm usually staying in the neutral range, um, <laughs> but the, the less darkness you use on hooded eyes, the better in my opinion. And if you're doing a liner, I actually have a technique that I showed in, in a YouTube video probably six years ago. If you go to my channel, it's called um, Winged Liner for Hooded Eyes. And it's a technique that um, kind of high or hacks the, the design, I guess, of a hooded eyelid and allows you to do a liner if that's what you wanted to do. So I know I have deep set eyes, they're not quite hooded, but I know I struggle with um, with uh, that type of eye shape. So yeah, if anything, just keep the darkness out here and keep the darkness to a minimum. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Amber. All right, Tani, we have a few more questions for you. Someone else is asking if you've had to match any shades during COVID days, and if so, what's the best way to do that? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, that's tough. I would, first of all, shop with the retailer like Bloomingdale's so where you can um, obviously like if you have issues returns aren't a problem or exchanges if, you're, if it isn't your color um, but you know I think brands now have a really good gauge on um, complexions where they describe everything really well like for me I'm a medium olive um, I'm very green as you can see um, so it is harder for me to match um, but for me personally, I know my go-tos. I know which foundations I love and continue to use. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a tough one for sure. <laughs> Amazing. And it's been so fun having you tonight. So before we go, we just have a few fun this or that questions. The Great. first one is, if you could only wear one makeup product for the rest of your life, would you pick mascara or concealer? Probably mascara, yeah. If you had, or would you rather have clear skin for the rest of your life or win $5 million? That's so hard, why are you doing this to me? Um, I think I would take the money. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather drop your favorite eyeshadow palette by accident or find out your favorite foundation is being discontinued? Oh, drop the eyeshadow palette. I could always replace, replace that. <laughs> Good answer. And last but not least, would you rather have perfect hair forever or an eternity of amazing brows? Oh, man. I think hair because it's just really hard to style and it takes a long time. So low maintenance is better for me. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Of course. Hey, thanks everyone for being here. I really appreciate your time and I hope that this look was useful to you. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, the products that I used are available. You can 
head to your nearest Bloomingdale's or head to bloomingdales.com and grab these and look forward to more beauty breakdowns from Bloomingdale's. I think the next one is going to be a masterclass from Clarence. So I am looking forward to that. I hope you are too. Have a good night.